Hello and welcome to another episode of Ray Eden's Magic in Helsinki. Uh, today we're visiting the Helsinki Book Fair and uh, this happens every year around this time and we're going to take a look around and see what we can find. Of course this is a book fair so you can expect to find lots and lots of books here but uh, we're going to see what we can find other than books uh, that might be of interest here. And uh, let's continue the trek. Let's continue the journey. Let's see what we can find. The movies are a uh, Finnish cartoon character and uh, very, very beloved in uh, Finland. There's uh, cartoons and comic books and merchandise, all movie merchandise. I'm not sure who all these characters are, but a Finnish person would be able to tell you. I think this is the main character right up here. What what is the name of this one? It's Mumi. Uh, yeah. Mumi is the name yeah, of the group. The, uh, the His name is Mumi. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And what is her name? Uh, it's Little Mai. Little. Little Mai. Little Mai. Yeah. I can give it an introduction to Mumi. A little Mai. And Mumi. I guess I've been here for 20 years and I didn't realize that just this one was named Mumi. I thought it was the whole group of them that were Moomy. She gave me this Moomy bag. Several time use. Look at that. All Moomy. And here we have the uh, Moomy uh, bookmobile, as we would call it in English. And uh, that's exactly what it is. It's a children's uh, bookmobile. And uh, they have the Moomies. They have Moomy. They're on the side of the bus. Plenty of things for kids to read. Good morning. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here? All right, so welcome to Arnira, which is the geekest shop in Helsinki. Uh -huh. uh, consisting of science, astronomy, steampunk, science fiction, fantasy, and uh, globes. I have a huge amount of different kind of globes. What do you want to tell the flat earthers? Pardon? What do you want to tell the flat earthers? Just, just use your eyes. <laughs> they do. That's how they know it's flat. <laughs> So, so uh, how about uh, those guys who visited the moon? Yeah, well, we don't want to go there either. 
Uh, what is your uh, What is your favorite object that you sell? Uh, well, um, I'm super interested in ancient astronomy instruments, and, and I have a wide range of these instruments. But I also know that when selling these instruments, I have to know how to use them. Uh huh. So I so I have studied. Okay. All right. Well, good luck today. Thank you. And uh, can you say the name of the shop one more time? Al Nilam. Al Nilam. Al Nilam. It comes from the constellation called Orion. It's, it's the middle star on the Orion's belt. Okay, great. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm Sara. And I'm Marco. Together we are Atelieri O Haapala and uh, we are a photo studio, an art project. We've been working together for 10 years and uh, now we made a book. Let's get a close up of the book. Great. Great. And uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Um, the book contains um, like the history of our 10 years of, of, of work and we managed to do this book with, um, with an Indiegogo campaign. So it's crowdfunded. Wow. Uh, Self-published. And uh, that gave us the chance to make it exactly like we want it to be. Wow. So. And from, uh, from like uh, 7,000 photographs that we have, we chose 243 photographs to be in this book. So all these amazing people here, uh, we didn't uh, make the costumes or dress them up, they did it themselves. And we just documented them. So are you the photographers? We are. We're okay. the photographers. And All right. the inspiration for the pictures came from the uh, 19th century or the shift of the century style of photography. Yeah. It's beautiful work. Yeah. All right, let's come in close yeah. and see. Here's a photograph we did at the Royal Opera of uh, in so Stockholm. Stockholm. Wow. In Sweden, there was this 1880s ball, and we had a group picture there with all these amazing people. So beautiful how you've captured the time out of time. And then we have been photographing also a lot in burlesque parties and... This is not burlesque. That's not burlesque, no, that's a, <laughs> that's a museum event. There is some burlesque. This is our characters. This small one is a legend. Uh, she's Satan's angel. She is famous for having fire um, things on her tassels. Tassels, yeah. yeah. Wow. For this one, we went to Scotland, to the Highlands. So you've traveled the world doing some of these pictures yeah. then? We went to the pyramids of Giza. Oh. Beautiful. 
And we've been to different events, photographing people, like uh, vintage markets, burlesque events. Oh, so many, lots of parties. All right. Can uh, do you have a website where uh, this uh, is available, where people can buy the book? Yes. Uh, can, uh, go ahead and give the website. <laughs> can we do it in English? Written. English? Written. Can you do it in English? We'll try. Okay. Uh, www.ohamala.com. Okay. We can leave it at that, and I will actually put the, yeah, uh, the HTML. Easier. Uh, on the video so that people can get to it. Listen, thank you very much for your time, beautiful work, and uh, have a great day here at the uh, book fair. Thank you. And good luck with the book. It's yeah, beautiful work Thanks. and it deserves to be seen. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. A good place to find uh, books in English uh, at the Helsinki Book Fair is um, in the comic book section. So let's see if we can find some English comic books here amongst the comic books. section of uh, comic books. Let's see what we have here. We have uh, Marvel Universe, Avengers, Amazing Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Team X, American Century, Uncle Sam, so Marvel, Sandman Mystery Theater, Catwoman, Trail of the Catwoman. Have you read any of these? If you've read any of these, let me know if any are worth buying. Sandman, Batman and Robin. Let's see what else we can find here. Pink. The Essential X-Men. Marvel Masterworks. Look at that. That's uh, about the 1966 uh, TV version of Batman. Wonder Woman. The Omnibus, Spider-Man, Deadpool, well, that looks like it will take a while to read, 80 euros for Deadpool, pretty thick book, Little Prince, Little Prince, I'm not really seeing a lot of titles that get my interest, but look at this. Number four, March. I seem to remember this back in the day. From 1996. Volume one, number four. Not sure if that's a reprint or an original. Not bagged and boarded. That's the one thing that I really don't like about comic books and oh look at that Star Wars the force unleashed have you played this game this is one of the few video games I actually played all the way through the far side gallery 5 but yeah like I was saying one of the things that I don't like about the comic book industry in Finland is that they don't bag and board uh, the books and uh, really kind of takes away from the quality. 
from doing that. Oh, look here. Star Wars Empire. Star Wars Empire 2. Oh, volume 3 and Volume 1. And uh, Volume 1 of Rebellion. I might have to, uh, I might have to get these ones. I might have to get these ones. If they're still here later in the day, I think those ones might go home with me. We have uh, something here called the Human Tool. It looks like some sort of saddle for a human. It looks like you take and put it onto a chair and then you sit on it. Maybe we'll uh, try one of these. Let's, let's see what, what it does. So on the chair and sit. Oh, all right. So it's made so you can swivel back and forth and it uh, fits your buttocks very comfortably. Yeah, it's a human saddle. And I guess it uh, makes sitting on a chair a little bit more comfortable. I think the way that it puts you higher up, I think is a little nicer too, uh, to have it a little, a little higher. Yeah, uh, this is comfortable. A human saddle. I found someone that's going to explain to me uh, exactly what this is. I've been told that this is invented in Finland, so let's find out exactly what the human tool is all about. Uh, this my invention is a combination of uh, ball and saddle, and you can put it on any chair, and what it does is immediately this ball activate your deep muscles and create very effective movement and all the time it trying to uh, roll your pelvis in good upright position. So this is very healthy way to sit because all the static situation is not good. And the edge of the chair don't anymore press your feet and uh, so when you can move it's very very nice to sit. Okay and um, I tried it over there and it seemed that it put you up a little bit higher would seem to make things more comfortable as well. Yes, yes. Okay. It's about 10 centimeters, but when we then we have also flat model which, which weighs only 4 centimeters. Okay. And you can put it on any chair and uh, I have this kind of plate with this you can even sit on the sofa. Oh. On the very, very soft Okay. Yes, and it's still working. All right. Yeah. And uh, do you have a uh, website? Yes, we have humantool.fi. Okay, humantool.com. Dot com both. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, we'll put a link down here at the bottom for you so that you'll be able to uh, to take a look at yeah. the human tool yourself. Yes. Do you ship? Uh, do you, will you ship? Um, yes. Worldwide. All over the world. Yes. Okay. All here is our brand. Human tool. I had mentioned that uh, we're going to look for strange things at a book fair, and I think I found something strange, and yet not so strange when you really think about it. Look at this. They're selling beds at the book fair. And why not? Where is uh, a very important place to read your books? Read your books in bed. So we have beds, so that you have a place to read your book. Here we have the pillows on which to rest your head. Beds, pillows, blankets, 
everything you need in order to enjoy your favorite book for going to sleep. I just found something else that uh, might seem anachronistic uh, at a, a book fair, but when you stop and think about it, maybe it's not. This is tea. So everything that you would need to make a cup of tea or coffee, coffee press, everything that you would need. Oh, over here we have some teapots. Basic looking, but ornamental, I suppose. Let's have a little bit of design to them. 59 euros. More over here. I like this red one. The teas. Look over here. From ceiling down to floor. And then all the way down. All different types of tea. Grab your book, get into bed, and have a nice cup of tea. Just relax. We have found uh, the private land of America here at the uh, at the book fair. Uh, why the U.S. Embassy is at the book fair, I don't know. Maybe they have some books to sell. But uh, let's take a look around the uh, American Embassy. Here they have on display uh, books, and from what I understand, the books are representing the, uh, the 50 states of America. In other words, the story happens uh, in that particular state. So, oh look, there's Ohio. Ohio, the Broom of the System. Never heard of that book. The Broom of the System from Ohio. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, all the A's. Delaware, the Saint of Lost Things. Ernest Hemingway. If I go through all these ones of states I've lived in, it's going to be a long time. Stephen King. Interview with the vampires. All right. So there, you can do your 50 states reading list. How many of these books have you read? Oh, you know what this one is. You know what this one is? The title's covered, but Stephen King's book that happens in Colorado. What is it? most powerless people in the world.
world are going to be girls. That's just a fact. So um, the, the other way is that they have sort of certain powers that I as a novelist can give to them. So they both have emp empathy malady, which means that they can see deeply into the suffering of others with the mother to the point where she is almost completely debilitated by this ability, this illness. And her daughter Pearl also uh, inherits the empathy for objects. So she's able to see the history in objects and, and where objects come from and what they might feel. So there's one scene, for example, where she's wearing a string of pearls and she knows that the pearls are lamenting the sea, that the pearls want to go back to the sea. But this also allowed me to let the guns speak. So the, gum, the guns can speak about their history and the guns can speak about their crime. And it allowed me to do something interesting with the guns. Uh, and, and so those victims of those gun crimes also speak in a way, who are also po completely powerless. And then in, in a true story based on lies, uh, no, I'm sorry, in Prayers for the Stolen, the previous novel, uh, the girl, for example, there's a moment when she's being harassed by, sexually harassed by a taxi driver. She's trying to get her friend who has a gunshot wound to a hospital. And this man is bothering her so much that she literally lifts, lifts up her skirt and urinates in the back seat of the taxi. So these are all kinds of <clears throat> ways where there's um, this exploration that I have of exercising what the powerless do and how they behave. Now, in terms of what we can do in human rights, I mean, that for me is a more specific thing. So as president of Penn, and because I'm the first woman president in 100 years, uh, I really felt that I needed to put women in the center of the organization. So we changed the charter because it, originally the charter had said that we will do everything to, uh, uh, as pen members, to combat hatreds of class, race, and nationality. And now it's been changed to all hatreds. So that includes gender, sexual or orientation, sexual identity. And we, in we included the word equality in the document. Then after that, we passed the Women's Manifesto, which has actually transcended Penn and has become part of the governance documents at UN Women and other places. And this is a document that the core of it is that you cannot use culture, religion, and tradition to harm women and girls, which is what happens everywhere. Being just in India, the government statistics are there are 63 million women missing in India. That's a genocide. It's also a crime against humanity. And there's 21 million women and girls living in homes where they're not wanted. So for me, a lot of doing the Women's Manifesto was really a work of sorrow because I feel such sadness, such deep sadness at the loss of these lives, which means their stories, which means the witnessing that we are missing from them. Uh, uh, in our previous uh, on stage conversation, you mentioned an interesting, um, interesting fact. Uh, um, you 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 met uh, in your work, and that is that it's very difficult to find female authors uh, for the Excel programs. Could you tell us about that? Because that is something that we don't actually, we don't, because in Finland, 50% of authors are women. So in a way, being an author is a very normal uh, thing for a woman, but it's not like that everywhere. Well, but even, I don't know, I can't speak for Finland, but Vida, who does these special counts in the United States and in England, uh, where women of privilege are publishing, has found that actually there isn't parity. So for example, Kamala Shamsi, the Pakistani English writer, did the count with prizes. So for example, most women, something like 98% of women who have won prizes for their novels, their novels have been about men. So still, we're, consciously and unconsciously, the male story is more valuable and uh, is what we're giving prizes to. Uh, so, but back to this thing about uh, giving writers shelter, 
So at Penn, we work very closely with ICORN, which is the International City of Refuge, which is based in Norway. And we have, I don't know, something like 63 cities in the world that receive writers who are at risk or in danger, who need to go into exile. And Penn is the organization that studies the cases. We study about 100 a year to decide which writers will be given spots. You know, Syrian writers, Bangladeshi bloggers, uh, Turkish writers, etc., etc. So what is very clear is that there are very few women writers that are applying for exile. And that comes down to if you have a file where you have to decide, is this person a writer or not? How do you know if you're a writer? Well, you have to have publications, you have to have reviews, you have to have prizes, and those are the things that define you even in something as basic as a file that might or might not get you a place in an exiled city. So many women just simply don't have these things as writers. They're still writing in little copy books and finding it very hard to publish, or they're published but they can't get reviews, or they can't win prizes. So in many parts of the world, that's very hard. And that will bring us to the end of another episode of Ray Eden's Magic in Helsinki. Uh, it is nearly six o'clock, and that is when the doors close here. And uh, time to go home. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing the different things that they have uh, here at the book fair. Uh, the book fair is held every year annually. Um, so you missed it this year, but you can always come next year. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. And make sure to click on that bell icon so that you'll get in, uh, notifications uh, every time that I upload a new video. So, until next time, find the magic in Helsinki. Before leaving, automatic payment machines are located in the parking area and at the north end. You can also pay with the cashiers. Thank you for listening.